Second chapter 1, uh, you know that we'll be studying uh, beyond that today. But chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 5. Uh, if you're there, say amen. <coughs> amen. And, uh, it should be on the screen momentarily. You can follow there if you don't have it uh, in your Bible. But let's read uh, together. It says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not say. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. Come on, somebody just shout, the just, the just shall live. Shall live. By faith. by faith. In the word of God, we're talking uh, from the book of Habakkuk. And uh, this is a tremendous, tremendous, uh, tremendous word. Uh, you know, as we know, Habakkuk uh, uh, in uh, chapter one, we know has questions about uh, God's uh, interest in us. Uh, and his interest in seeing justice and righteousness prevail. And he asked the question uh, that why doesn't God do something? And I know that the, the thing that, that uh, I think about when I look at this is it reminds me of some of the questions that many of us uh, have uh, in our lives. We look at what's going on in our lives. We ask, uh, ask sometimes why doesn't God do something? And then the answer God gave is, I, I am going to do more than what you see me doing now. Right. And so, God, what are you going to do? He says in verse 6, he said, I'm going to raise up uh, some people to come and, and really give you a struggle. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he said, you think, you think you, you're going through right now, just stay tuned. He said, I'm going I'm to tell you uh, that coming down the road is going to be a people that doesn't even exist right now that God says, I'm going to raise them up for the purpose of giving you fits, is what, what he says. He says, I'm going to use the Chaldean. Then he called them nasty and disrespectful and irreverent people uh, that are ungodly. I'm going to use the ungodly to judge you. Because uh, I'm sick of your attitude about, uh, about me. I see, the ungodly never uh, saw or uh, honored the, the mighty works that God has done, uh, that I've done in their life. But you know me. Yes, sir. And you have made a choice in spite of what I've done in your life to turn your heart away from me and trust other gods, is what he said. Yes, and so... Here is the righteous saying, why would you use unrighteous folk to judge us when we know you, when we, uh, when we have submitted to you, when we call you our God, why would you do this? Because uh, of what you heard Minister Perry say, there are many that profess a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And then uh, the truth of the word uh, you know, rises here because he says, to us, and we know in the word, the Bible declares that there's going to be a lot uh, in Matthew. He declares that will say to me, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, not only do I not know you, but he'll say, I never knew you. Yeah. Now, that's even more of an insult, a, a slam against the persons uh, that have come to church for, uh, for years. Uh, but they've come with the wrong heart and with the wrong spirit. And the Lord said, you are not mine. Uh, not only did you fall, you, you didn't fall off the wagon, but you never made it on the, onto the wagon. Uh, the only reason you said the words about being saved because you felt pressured uh, from the church mothers. It was never in your heart to do it to begin with. And you never really received me. Uh, and this is what the word says about God's methods. Why does, uh, this is the second thing Habakkuk uh, a third thing uh, you know, in this, in, in chapter one, he, he asks, why do you use the wicked uh, uh, to judge us, to, uh, to oppress us? And let me say this 
uh, just as a parenthetic note. Uh, you see, the Bible says whenever you buffet it for your own fault, he says do what? Take it. Uh, but then there's a powerful thing too to understand that, that when the right, when the wicked curse you, say you better know that uh, the Lord's desire for us is that we really would not be people uh, that, uh, <clears throat> uh, that walk around with a fearful spirit uh, and people that easily become distracted by stuff that comes up in our lives. Amen? Amen. Uh, it's good for us to know. And see, the problem, remember, don't miss the problem here. The problem in this text is that these were the righteous folk that had turned their back uh, on God. Uh, and so God washed us sins a prophet by the name of Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk means embrace. <laughs> that means that, listen, uh, one, I embrace the, the challenge that uh, the, the people are going through, that, uh, that are questioning and that bringing into, um, into counsel the wisdom of God in this text. And then he says, I also embrace, uh, you know, what God says and what God does in the lives of his people for the purpose of bringing them to a place of correction. Do you hear what I'm saying? And see, whenever you see God doing what he's doing in the book of Habakkuk, you, you must understand that it's not, uh, he's not doing it for the purpose of destroying, but he does it for the purpose of developing is what the word says. Uh, and we see this, uh, this uh, continue for uh, almost the entirety of chapter 1. Uh, but please note, saints, just as a parenthetic note this, there are illustrations in the word of God where people uh, are cursed by other folk uh, that God says, uh, don't be unnerved by this or don't be fearful of other folk. But listen, it is a testament, as you've heard in this room this morning, when people that are going through take a stand for God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Listen, it's all right to live godly, to live holy, uh, and it's easier when things are going well. Amen. But really when God wants us uh, to be his servants, amen, not only when things are well, but when, listen, challenge rise up against you. Now, how many of y'all know it, it, it takes uh, the, the prayer that, uh, that uh, Minister Lewis was teaching us about this morning? Uh, when folk are speaking vile words against you. How many of y'all can handle people talking against you? I did. Most folk can stay saved pretty good until somebody opened their mouth against them. Now, you got to consider, you got to consider now what, what kind of, uh, of challenge that is for a real believer. Now, back in the, in the day, we call it Bible day. This is a Bible day right here. But listen, but centuries ago, people that named the name of Christ were killed because, and, and people in the, in the world, in various countries are being murdered right now because they believe in God. Amen. 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 But listen, in, in this country that we live in, the, one of the most ferocious challenges we have is people talking about us. Huh? Our lives are not at stake. Our lives are not in jeopardy. Amen. We just have to face sometimes people saying negative things about us. And we'll quit God because of somebody's mouth. Amen? Now, how many of y'all know, how many of y'all ever heard people talk about, listen, uh, we, we've got to not be fearful of folk, but be more reverent uh, uh, to God in spite of what others are saying. That means when the devil tells you that you're not going to make it, huh? it must mean something to you. How many of y'all can listen? When you hear people, uh, I'm going to say, people that believe God like Mother Washington. How many of y'all can really believe when she would say something to you like, uh, listen, uh, as often as the enemy tells you you're defeated, you should hear that word and then understand that he is alive. He is alive. Amen. Amen. If he's cursing you, that must mean the absolute reverse is about to take place in your life. How many of y'all believe that? Yeah. How many of y'all, hold on, hold on one second, hold on. But how many of y'all would just simply say, well, that's just mother. You know, she, she's just an eternal optimist and she's going to say something good no matter what negative happens. But see, we don't often respond like that. I, I, I've got to hurry. But, but we, when folks start saying things against us, huh, we really react to what they're saying. Amen? 
How many of us react when the doctor says something to us? Not respond, but react. I mean, let's not even go that far. How many of us react when people call you up on the phone or you meet somebody on your job? Oh, when someone you meet in church says something negative to you. you. You just finished giving God the glory. You just finished testifying and talking about how awesome the Lord is. In just that instance, you've gone, listen, from standing in faith to standing ready to fight. Can you tell your neighbor the devil is alive? I mean, why? how many of y'all believe that this is not, but this is not just something that, listen, the, the mothers do. I believe if you walked up to Mother Walker and you told her that her name was, was Mother Williams, huh, she's not going to get mad at you. She's not going to condemn you to, to hell because you called her something that she's not. She, she knows who she is. Amen. How many of y'all know what your last name is? Everybody? Some of y'all do. That's good. That's good. We got the right, the right class. So if someone call your name, that's not your, your name. I mean, does it, do you cry, run down to the courthouse and start doing research trying to figure out really who you? <laughs> no, no, what would we now Listen, now one of the things may be, our, our reaction in some cases is, look, I've told that person 18 times what my name is. You think they're off. You don't think that you're off. Amen. So why then when somebody says to you, you are not a child of God, you believe it <laughs> to the point to where you get nervous? Why don't you just write that person off, at least as far as the comment that they're, that they're making? Right. Amen? Why do we allow folk to have that much influence and impact on our life? Turn real quick. Let me just, th this is the backdrop of what Habakkuk's uh, saying to the saints. Turn to 2 Samuel real quick. Let me just... Chapter 16, I believe. You all there? Y'all know the verse? Tell me which one. What, what verse, Mother? Seven is good. All right, Mother says seven. Turn to verse seven. Now, I think she started with verse number 10, didn't she? I heard it. I just asked for confirmation. We're going to read through verse 10, since that's what Mother said. Read. All right, let's do that. Verse number seven. Put that on the screen if you can. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse seven. And thus says Shemai, when... Uh, he cursed. Come out. Come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. Do you see that? And that's the verse mother said she wanted us to read. And verse 8 says, The Lord has, uh, has returned upon you, or upon thee, all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned, it says, and the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son, of thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. And verse 9 said, then said uh, Abishai, the son of uh, Zeruah, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my Lord, the king? Let me go over and uh, take his head off. Huh? He said, I pray. Just let me at this bloody dog. I want him. I want him. Get, let me have him is what. Now, the, this is David. David is surrounded by his mighty men of war. Huh? And this brother is talking smack about the king, cursing him. And here is the mighty man, mighty man of war saying, now, these are, this is, must have been Peter's granddad or something. I don't know. It says, who shall, uh, <laughs> he, he said, the son of Zeruah unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? He said, let me go over, I pray thee, and I call him a dog, uh, and take off his head. And then the king said, listen, what have I, this is verse 10, mother said, read uh, verse 10. It says, what am I to do with you, you sons of Zeruah? So he said, so David said, so let him curse. 
Because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Wherefore hast thou done this? He says, Don't, don't even question it. You say, don't, don't even get nervous about what he's doing. And David said to Abishai, verse 11, All that serve, behold, my son which came forth uh, of my bowels, he, he seeks my life. He said, How much more now? Uh, he says, uh, May this Benjamite do it. Let him alone. He said, let him, uh, let, he said, Let him curse, for the Lord has bidden him. He said, It may be that the Lord, look at this, will look on my affliction. Huh? And that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. He said, let him go ahead and do it. Yes, sir. He said, he ain't nothing but a hater. Uh -huh. Now that's what he said. He said, listen, but the Lord, look at what he said in verse 12. He said, the Lord don't turn this thing around because this person is cursing me. Yes. Huh? He said, the Lord will send the opposite. Do you see that in verse 12? Did he say he's going to give me good yes, sir. for this cursing? Huh? Does it sound like what the, what, listen, what we should be doing as saints of the Most High God? That even when haters come against you, you ain't got to be nervous about what folk are saying. You just need to know who you are. Amen? He said, listen, leave him alone. Don't hurt him. Just let them, if you study that, you'll see this brother followed them, listen, all the way. Uh, listen, along their travel, up on the hills, cursing them as they were going. They were on their place of refuge, and here this, uh, this hater is mocking them all the, listen, along the way. Tell your neighbor your haters won't ever let up. Listen, they may still be out there, but you got to know, listen, you got to know who you are. Amen? To trust that if God be for you, amen, you got to know that, listen, the Lord said no matter who comes against you, if God be for you, he's much more than anybody that rise up against you. Does that make sense to anyone in here? Amen? Listen, he, he declares, and then we started, uh, we moved from this. This is uh, the, 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 the rantings in the heart of Habakkuk when he's saying the just shall live by faith. Now, do you see David walking like we said, a uh, mother, uh, watching the mother walk, walk? Huh? David didn't get unnerved. He said, listen, David, you're the king. Why you let this man uh, speak to you like that? David said, listen, don't start fighting your haters. Just keep moving on. Huh? Tell your neighbor, don't, don't let your haters distract you. You better know, that, listen, that if God has given a promise to your life, that it doesn't matter what others try to do to curse, listen, or to counsel or to cause you, listen, contradiction in your spirit about what God has spoken. Amen? If God declared it, guess what? The Bible said if he said it, it's got to happen. So what David, David, if you follow that, he never stopped moving toward his destination. He said don't even, listen, don't pay him any attention. Huh? And so Habakkuk, the same way, in spite of all the stuff that's going on against Israel, you have to know that when they move, listen, he moved from verse number one, even in the midst of his discouragement, he remembers how awesome God is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? If you read that, you'll find, look at verse number 12. Art thou from everlasting, O my Lord? It says, my holy one, shall we not die? He says, oh, we shall not die. Huh? For thou hast ordained them. See that? This is Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12. Almighty God, it said, thou hast established them for correction. Yes, so what he's saying here is, listen, he remembers God in the midst of all of this stuff that he's going through. Tell your neighbor, in the midst of your storm, you need to remember God. And then God goes on to, to, uh, to uh, verse number, chapter 2, verse number 1, and he starts telling him this. He says, I'm going to stand upon my watch and send me upon the, uh, the tower. He says, I'm going to watch to see. Uh, listen, what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision in verse number 2. Huh? He says, and make it plain upon the table that he may run that, that readeth it. He says, listen, you need to record, uh, listen, what I've spoken unto your life. Yes, Amen. He says, you need to write what I've spoken. When I've given you a word, when I've given you a promise, listen, we need to rehearse that thing in our spirit. Yes, when stuff don't look like what God said, he said, you got to remind yourself of the promise. Does that make sense? Yes. 
How many of y'all have ever reminded yourself of the promise and listen, you got new life because you remembered what God said about your life? Huh? When the enemy said you couldn't make it, you had to rehearse the promise in your heart. Yes, Amen? Yes, you had to remember, listen, God said, I'm the head and not the tail. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, write this vision. Write this vision. And make it plain. Huh? Yeah. He says so that those that read it can run with this. Yes, and listen, anytime there's any attack against your faith, a, a attack against what God has spoken over your life. We've got to set ourselves to remember what God said about who we are in him. Amen. And we've got to find, listen, draw strength from what the word of God has declared over our life. What I heard that this morning <laughs> is this, when you're going through struggles, when you're going through trials, to remember that it's just for a season. Huh? It's not going to last always. What you mean, preacher? I mean the Bible said, he that hath begun a good work in us, he's able to perform it. That means uh, if he started it, he will complete it. Huh? If he called us to this place, he has the capacity, he has the power because he's an omnipotent God uh, to complete everything that he started. Yeah. That means that, listen, if in fact I'm not there right now, if I just do what David did, huh? Do like the mothers do. Don't allow the words uh, to stop you from walking. Listen, toward the fulfillment of what you know God uh, has spoken over your life. Yes. That's why I like Paul's testimony. Paul said, listen, I have fought a good fight. Yeah. Huh? He says, I have finished my course. And then he says, I have kept the faith. Tell your neighbor, faith will keep you moving. Even when you don't see the victory. Huh? You got to know the victory is yours before you see it. Why? Because others can be allowed to paint a new picture. Listen, in your heart and in your mind, if you don't see the picture that God has already ordained for your life. That's why he said, listen, in 2 Corinthians, uh, he said, listen, uh, he declared, he said this, he said, casting down, uh, huh, images, huh? I know it says imagination, but an imagination is an image That's in right. your mind. Yes, when you hear people having a very vivid, a very lively, a very active imagination, that's when you got the victory and you imagine that you are defeated. How many of y'all have ever, you know how we do. Listen, I always use these illustrations uh, about speeding on the highway. You know, when you roll around the corner and you see the highway man, listen, uh, perched, listen, on the, uh, uh, on the ramp or hiding in the bushes someplace, the first image you have is, oh, my goodness, I just got me a ticket. I just got me a Oh, and then you got to reach back and find the son of Zion to remind yourself, my God, thank God we have the, the victory. But listen, you got to learn, listen, to cast down those images. You don't hear what I'm saying, huh? You got to learn to cast down those images of defeat in your mind. That's what the Bible said. In every high thing, uh, huh, that exalted itself. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, he said, in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm not entertaining this defeat. That's why you can get the glad glass no matter what negative stuff goes on in your life. Yes. Huh? Habakkuk was in the pit and Israel uh, was concerned about where they were. Listen, in their relationship with God uh, because God was clearly disappointed in how they had executed up to this point. But, uh, but, but Habakkuk said to them, listen, the Lord said, write the vision. Yes. Huh? What caused folk to fall by the wayside is forgetting who God is in your life. If you want to live like the preacher said, listen, God desire us to live, then you got to be reminded incessantly that he's still God. You got to be reminded incessantly that no matter how negative things look, I'm still who God says that I am. Tell your neighbor we still have the victory. Listen to declare it. What causes folk, and if you would listen, just consider this. The thing that will cause you to walk in failure, listen, for the rest of your life, or any time there's a failure in your life, is because you've allowed doubt to enter in. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Oh, glory to God. You never seen somebody jump off the horse as long as they believed that victory was theirs. You never seen them jumping ship on anything that they've laid, listen, their commitment to and their confidence in. You wouldn't just walk off a job because you believe it's going to fold if you never doubted that it was going to. You don't hear what I'm saying. 
Huh? Yeah. Listen, folk that give up on relationships oftentimes because they doubt that it's ever going to be what God said it's going to be. Huh? They quit because of what they see now, not about and forget about what God said is going to be. Tell your neighbor, I need to rehearse in my mind. Come on, shout to them this. Huh? What God said about my situation. Why would somebody climb up, listen, on a multiple-story building and take a swan dive? It's because they doubt what God said, huh? That's why folk will put a gun to their head because they don't believe what God said is going to come to pass. That's why we resort to underhanded deeds and, and listen, and, and walking in, in, in darkness and uh, executing mischief is because we doubt that what God said he's going to do is really ever going to come to pass. But we've got to, uh, listen, consist consistently remind ourselves that if God declared it, that nothing can stop God from bringing it to fruition. Come on, somebody shout, write the vision. Write the vision. That's what the Lord declared. Listen, the prophet, listen, was waiting and he was responding. And the significance of the reply and the central truth for the saints of God is this, to know that what God started, God will complete. Amen? Listen, so we don't ever stop moving toward fulfillment of what God has spoken over our life. To know that God has the power to bring to manifestation everything that he says. Habakkuk, listen, appears uh, listen, uh, in this text as if God is doing nothing, but he finds the confidence in the word of God by rehearsing in his spirit what God said he's going to do. And often when we give up early, don't you know, you miss what God has coming next in your life. Yes, Tell your neighbor God's prepared to do a new thing in you. Come on, tell your neighbor the next thing happening in your life is much greater than what's happening now. So tell them this last thing, so it's always too early to quit. That's what the Lord declared. That's what God is saying to us. And so he says, saints of God, that's why the text, listen, that's why the title of this text is, is this. Is, listen, the, the just shall live by faith. Amen. That means that I'm not living based on what I'm seeing. Huh? I'm living on, based on what God is saying. Not by what I'm seeing, but by what God is saying. What is God saying to you about your situation? The Bible talks about, listen, what faith is. And we started on last week. Faith, it says, now faith is the substance of the things I expect. And it's the evidence of the things that I cannot see or things that are not seen. Huh? He said faith is the, is the tangible of what's not seen. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Huh? But how effective is it in the lives of those that are in this room right now? If we really believe the just shall live by faith. That means that, listen, saints of God, that all I have right now, as, listen, as tangible, and I want to say it this way, as tangible evidence of the fulfillment of God's promise for my life is my faith. Amen. That's why the Bible said, if thou just canst believe that all things are possible. That makes sense to anyone in here. Huh? That means, listen, you, Sister um, uh, Tabitha, who uh, testified about, uh, I think, a, a job, she said she heard in her spirit promotion. And when they called into the office, they said they, they, they released her from a job. She was terminated. Now, this is her testimony. She heard promotion, but she got terminated. Amen? Uh -huh. Can you believe still? Huh? In the midst of, listen, because, listen, faith. The Bible said, now faith. Huh? It says it is the, the substance of the stuff that you expect to happen. Huh? Now, you know, you know faith sounds good, doesn't it? Huh? If you were called in and given that promotion. Now, that, that was, now that's more of my testimony. Huh? You know, but, but it's something. Now, listen, if faith is really what we, tr we utilize to trust God, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Amen? Now, faith. That means it doesn't matter, Deacon, what happens in the natural. He's still God. Amen? It doesn't matter that, listen, there's a downturn in the physical, uh, listen, activities in your life. Your, your finances now, the more you've sown, you know what the word says. The Bible says, given is ever given unto you how? Press down, 
Shaking together and what? Listen, you've been given and now you broke. <laughs> but the Bible said the just shall live high. Now, listen, you may not have money in the bank right now, but ask a neighbor, do you have faith? Listen, faith, faith is belief not in the things, but faith is belief in the God of the things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. That means he's still God no matter what things I have in my possession. Does that make sense? How many of y'all believe, listen, I wonder if Joseph doubted the vision the Lord gave him when he spent not one year, but 13 years in prison. Huh? Listen, it should help us along the way. I've got a quick, uh, another and last par parenthetic note here, maybe. He spent 13 years in prison. You know, the world tell you 13, listen, is a bad number. Amen? Even buildings, buildings, uh, you know, people build buildings, won't even build a 13th floor. I don't know what they call it. They won't even label it number 13. Huh? Elevator don't get off on 13. They go from 12 to 14. My God. Do you believe the Lord? And, listen, and we have a nerve to follow what the world says in superstition. Huh? But Joe, listen, 13 years for him, listen, that was a sign of the end of his calamity. Huh? You think he had to think he would curse number 13? No. He came up out of prison. <laughs> Ah, he was elevated in what year? You don't hear what I'm saying. Huh? See, the Lord will use of the very thing that the world turns in. So I wonder how many days, how many times uh, was Israel required to march around uh, the Jericho walls before they came down? How many times they marched around the walls? I heard a, I heard a number. How many times they march around that wall? Now, who said that first? Oh, we got too many women. I'll put my money back. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the judge? <laughs> Somebody judging it here. So how many times they march around the wall? 13 times. 13 times they marched around the wall. And what happened with the walls when they marched around? After, after the 13th time, what happened to their, what happened to their, their storm? Huh? It eradicated. What happened to the wall that was built in front of them? It came down. So do you believe that, thir listen, what the world says is not good for you. It has nothing to do with what God says. Does that make sense to anyone in here? So we don't listen. We don't listen to what the world says. What we, the Bible says, the just shall live by what? Faith. By faith. Look at what, uh, what Habakkuk uh, went through here. He says faith in what we see, number one. That's what we do. Huh? We have faith in things uh, that we can visualize. I mean, things that we see in the natural. If we're sick, we can see that. So when God says you're healed, is a challenge for us because all we see is affliction. Amen? But there are many in the world who put their faith on the things that they can see with their eyes. But listen, but this faith is not really in, in what you can see. Listen to this, but it's in themselves, in their ability to interpret what they see correctly. Do you hear what I'm saying? Huh? Listen, what we are struggling with, saints of God, is not is, is, is whether or not we're going to have faith in God or faith in ourselves. If you can only trust what you see, then you're only trusting what you understand. You're only trusting your ability, trusting the extent to which you, listen, can reason or, or apply logic to what's going on. So are we having greater faith in us? Or should our faith be rather, listen, a place in the God of the Bible? The problem is that, listen, we don't see everything. Huh? And even what we see, we don't have that. That's why it's a problem. That's why the Bible said, don't trust your heart. The Bible said, trust him. Amen? It says, listen, your heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it is what the word says. But the Bible said to trust God. I've got to close. I've got to stop here. But this is the, this is the problem, saints of God, with trusting ourselves. Listen, when, when you trust only what you see, one, you don't see everything. No, sir. Amen? Amen? And then watch this. And then even what you, how many of you all have seen some stuff and you found out later you misinterpret what you saw? Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? How often do you think we misinterpret what we see with our natural? Yes, so then why would we trust what we see? 
Huh? Because we know that, listen, what we see may be, listen, uh, misinterpreted or re-explained uh, to us at some later point. Does that make sense? Amen? Amen. How many times did you know, watch this illustration? Uh, you, because most of the, the people that, that, that are... Uh, <laughs> How many young people in here have been called by your parents and you start thinking about all the bad stuff you've done and wondered if this is it? And they called and said, you've been a good boy, a good girl, let me just give you something nice, huh? We misinterpreted what we heard. And then some of us now, we even know the, the, the intonations of our parents' voices when they call. So we know when to get nervous. And some of us say, when they call you by your first name, you know it's lights out. Huh? Amen? But we misinterpret. We don't see everything and then, listen, when we do, uh, you know, and then for the older uh, saints uh, of, God, of God, it is when, uh, you know, I used to uh, talk about, uh, and I lived in a neighborhood, uh, that when the, the, the sirens came on, everybody ran. <laughs> so, I mean, There's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> They just said, they, they just coming. They, everybody believe, look, they must be coming for me because I know, I know I've been doing this stuff. So nobody stood up waiting for the, so everyone cleared out. Like, I, I won't. Amen. So listen, we misinterpret what we do see. And second problem is we don't see everything. So what the Lord says is, listen, faith is not trusting what you see, but it's simply trusting what God said. Amen. So then we got to determine this last thing, listen, how and where to put our faith and where to put our confidence in God. And we're going to close right there next week. We've got to, uh, to move on. I want to get to chapter 3 when, uh, you know, Habakkuk really lays out his confidence in God, in God's ability. He says, all of my physical sustenance, he says, seemingly has disappeared. But he says, I'm still going to trust God. See, this is the word of God for the lives of the saints of God now. The Lord spoke in this room some uh, weeks ago and said to us, this is not the season for us to doubt. But God said, my word for you is to trust me. Amen? And, and then watch this. And I, I, I really desire to see this uh, uh, understanding about what doubt does really conveyed to the saints of God. If you make a, a point in your life, and listen, I'm not going to doubt God. I promise you it will transform yes, your life. Yes, Amen? Just doubt. If you, if you trace every failure, every problem that you have in your life, I promise you, you'll trace it right back to a, the, the failure point is when you start doubting. Yes, Amen? That's the thing that got you off track. When people in a relationship doubt uh, one another's sincerity, you know, it, 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 start, it gets the relationship off track. Does that make sense? When people doubt the genuineness of the person they're in a relationship with, it keeps the relationship off kilter. Because everybody believes, listen, they're just trying to get the upper hand on me for their own personal gain. And there's no trust. Listen, what causes, listen to this, what causes doubt is simply a lack of trust. Amen? That is so simple, isn't it? But yet we do it all the time. Stand on your feet, saints of God. We've got to go. But the just, the Bible says, shall live by faith. We're the people of God that will trust God. Amen? And for those, Amen. Of the, those of the people that's in this room today, listen to this, saints of God. If you've got money uh, uh, challenges right now, what the Lord says to you is not to, not to doubt. Amen? Glory to God. And, and then there are people that have gone through so many uh, egregious things early on in their lives that people grow up uh, walking in an air of mistrust. They believe that everybody, people fight folk that's not even fighting. Huh? And they interpret everything that happens through the lens of these people are attacking me. Amen? Do you hear, do you hear what I'm saying? But the Bible says for us not to fear. And fear is something that if, if you said it, what the Lord said, his desire is that we will not be individuals that walk in fear or walk in doubt. But we have a confidence in God. Does that make sense? Did it appear that David had a confidence in God yes, while, listen, he was in a storm, wasn't he? Look, your son, his son trying to kill him. Huh? He's got a heckler on the, on the mountaintop following him saying, you're a murderer. Huh? And you're about to lose everything that you thought you had. Huh? But David said, don't even listen. I'm not even going to bother. Yes, How many of us, listen, the, the just shall live 
by faith, that we're going to trust God no matter what stuff is going on in our lives. As our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, our hearts are open, our time is out. If we believe God, I want to speak to the people in this room right now that says, listen, I know that there is a, a, a challenge. I know that there is a struggle in my life with trusting God, with believing him. Amen. There's a struggle with saying to God, <clears throat> listen, in spite of all the evidence that I've got in front of me, I'm going to believe you in spite of the fact that what I see is exactly the opposite of what you said. Listen, it's going to be. The thing that God spoke over your life 